Hey, and welcome. Let's talk about herbs. So any sort of RC drift or any sort of RC track borders or edges out there. Most popular is Tetsujin, but uh, Overdose also makes some. I always have a challenge trying to find them in stock or available within uh, you know, the United States. So I thought, why don't we try and 3D model some and see what we can come up with and then we'll figure out how we can mass produce. So let's dig in and we're just gonna use Tinkercad to start out with. And it's simple and a lot of what we're gonna do is basic shape. So no need to use Blender or anything like that. All right, so let's start with a blank canvas. We'll bring a rectangle over. We want this to be about 100 centimeters wide and 150 long or four inches by six inches. We'll take some angles, put those on the ends, make those the same length. Copy that one, flip it around. Attach it to the other side. And let's make some connectors for it. I believe I want on the near side here, we'll make that a positive, and we will make a negative space for it to clip into from the next piece on the other side. So in doing that, we'll bring in a cylinder. We're gonna make that round so it's not octagonal, and bring that over into here, copy them. And then let's make that negative space so we can actually line it up a little bit easier. We'll group those together, duplicate it, toss one down at the other end, keep one over here, and we'll reduce the size of the center rectangle so we can actually keep that down here and line everything up. And we'll make this one a positive. We'll group all these together, and now we have a shape and then we'll just export those to be able to print it. Let's see what we got. All right, so we got version one. And being too rapid in your rapid prototyping, you're gonna come across uh, not enough infill and poor layer height. So let's print another one. All right, so it came out good. No real issues other than I don't know what we were thinking, but uh, there is no way to connect those two unless I actually make an overlay for that. Um, but I really think these are going to be too high anyways. So we'll still try it out and see, but I think the car is just going to slam right off the side of that. So let's make another one. This time we're going to start with a cylinder. So we'll bring it over, flip it so it's parallel with the plane of the workspace. Change the size on it to 30 millimeters tall. That way when we bring this down and cross the plane, it will be 15. Again, it is 100 millimeters wide, 150 long. We're gonna do the exact same thing we did in the previous one for the pins that we're going to use as connectors, except this time we'll create a separate pin just so we don't have that same challenge we had last time. So here we're doing the exact same thing, bringing rectangle over, two cylinders, lining those up. We're going to join those together into a single object. Copy that and put one at this end and one at the other. So I can line these up properly. There we go. Let's change the size there so it actually fits in the middle a little bit easier. And that way everything should line up right where the axis are. So we merge those together. We're going to copy this object, put another one at the other end. This will be much easier. We'll create uh, essentially a Lego block or something like that to join the two together. And we still have item below the plane here that we want to get rid of. So let's take one more cube. We'll make that extremely large to cover everything. Then we'll just drop it below the plane and then merge all the objects together. So that way we have just the curb that we're looking for here. And I did not line that up properly, so let's make that a little bit bigger. And that should do it. All right, let's export it and see what we got. All righty, version two came out fine. Same layer heights and everything as the previous. It's much more rounded style. Uh, I have a feeling that it's still going to be too high on the sides as far as what that angle is. So let's move on to version three, where we actually decrease that angle and actually the height as well, probably. So let's see where we can go. So with this one, let's start out with a rectangle again, make it 100 by 150 millimeters. 
we'll create the connection points that we did on the other one. So yet again, another negative space rectangle, two cylinders. Make sure when we bring those in, we change the number of faces so it's round. Make those both 10 millimeters in diameter. Line those up together. Merge that as an object. Bring those two together. Copy it. And toss one down at the other end here. Now let's take another cylinder and use it as negative space. Let's make the concave angle that we're going to use. We'll rotate this. Change it to a huge oval, and then we'll use that to actually identify what our new angle is going to be on this. So let's copy that, bring the other one over here, make sure those line up fairly well, and we should have something that we can combine together and print. Let's see what we got. Tell you what, how about we see what we can do as far as angles with this, since it's a straight item. It's going to be a little bit of a challenge, but let's see what it could look like. So I'm going to remove a couple pieces out of here so they don't get deformed when we change the, the sizing of them. Uh, we'll reduce that, we'll create another one, duplicate of it, line those up, let's create one more, put that at an angle too. So these are 30 degree angles that I'm doing. So this will be a 15 degree angle for this portion. And see if we can line those appropriately. It's too wide. There's a really jagged slot coming out of there. And now it's not wide enough. So let's make it a little bit, a little bit wider. Bring that in at a 15 degree angle. And it's not pretty. I could probably sand that out and uh, make it acceptable for what we want to do. Uh, let's rotate this connection point to 30 degrees as well. Toss that in there. Close enough. Let's merge it all together into, and let's line that up. And since this is at an angle, I can't just do single millimeter steps. I'm going to change that to at least half or maybe a quarter of a millimeter. But let's merge them together and yeah, we can do angles. All right, version three. Come back and we look at that angle. It's definitely got uh, got a steep approach. Should not have any issue with the car bouncing off the side of it, but I have a feeling it's too high and the car is actually gonna get thrown off course. But we do have two of them and obviously the little clip that we printed for them, they all interconnect anyway, so we can Pop those together, and that's how they'll end up looking once we get those in place. Let's make one more. Something with a steeper angle, but maybe sloped. So let's look at a couple other options within Tinkercad here. Uh, this is Extruder, or Extrusion. You can actually change individual points associated with it, and that way you're able to create some sweeping curves. Very good for some basic sculpting that you may want to do. Not really what we're looking for here, but there's another tool in here called pipe, or bent pipe that uh, we can bring in. So let's see what that looks like. Let's make it straight. So we'll make it a zero degree bend. And then let's bring a guide over for us. We know we want to make it 10 millimeters high and 100 millimeters wide. So let's see if we can change the size and the diameter of the pipe itself so we can get to a point where it has the right angle being shallow but still gets us up to 10 millimeters. So I'm playing around here with what the actual width of the pipe is. Currently that's about the same as we had when we just did half so let's make it much wider and we need to make it taller. Actually it's probably a little too wide. Let's see what that angle looks like. And that's looking a little bit better. Still want to make it taller, I think, and uh, end up having to make it a little bit wider too, in order to get a nice shallow angle as we come up. Uh, the goal for this one will end up being that the car will be able to brush up against the curb. However, it won't actually be pushed off of it. 
and it could actually just go right over top of it if uh, if you had enough speed for it. So that looks pretty close. It's a nice, it's a nice angle. We have about 100 millimeters on there. That should work. Okay, let's get rid of the thing that's on the bottom below the plane. So again, we'll do just a simple negative space rectangle. Make sure that it's large enough to cover all the portions below it. And then we'll go through and we'll create the same end connection points that we did previously as well uh, with the rectangle negative space and two cylinders. This is the final version of it. Good, good angle. It's got the end connectors, but bent pipe allows you to actually change the angle of the turn itself. So instead of it being zero now, we're going to change it back. We'll go 30 degrees. Since the it is so long, that 30 degrees uh, really exaggerates. So let's turn it out to be something that uh, is usable with the track here. Uh, we'll increase this a little bit. That looks about right. And let's drag over that additional connector and put those in there together and then we have a final piece that we will print out after we decide what our final product is. Alrighty, so here's technically version 5. 4 or 3, whatever it was, is so bad it wasn't even worth the, the time to put it on here. Uh, I think this one should work out. It's got a very gradual angle to it, got a sharp edge, car should be able to ride up on top of it and hopefully come off. Uh, again, if we look at what we got there, same clips, really just like a Lego almost. Right, we can pop those together. Man, that's how it'll end up looking. I think that one will probably end up working, but let's put together a demonstration and see where we can go with that. So let's wrap this up. Alrighty, one of these is going to have to work for us. So thanks for spending some time. Next video, we'll actually put these down on a track and ram some cars into them and see what happens. And then from there, we'll try and decide what we're going to end up doing, which ones we're going to pick, and then how we can actually mass produce them. Whether that's going to be vacuum forming or injection or maybe I'll just end up 3D printing them. I think each of these should probably run about 20 to 25 cents in filament and materials. So look forward to talking to you again wherever you are. Have a great day.